Hello, I'm Greg Reike of Reike Mods, and welcome to episode 20 of season 2 of my Power PC series. This episode isn't the season finale. I've decided to extend the season 1 episode and end up on episode 21. Uh, but I wanted to film this today because this is part 2 of the uh, TI-4600 build. Um, well, refurbishment, basically. And um, I was really shocked when I ordered this cooler. Um, I ordered this cooler while filming the last video. I ordered it around 5.42, I think it said on the uh, order thing, on Friday. And um, this came in around 5 today. Today's Monday. This was really quick. This is so fast. I was shocked that it came. So this is the cooler. It's a Thermaltake cooler, um, specially made for the TI series. Um, cards and um, basically we're going to install it today this is new old, new old stock um, it's got a production date on the back of it that says July 15 2005 we'll show you in in a second uh, it's never been opened so um, I'm hoping it's going to work and all the uh, thermal pads and stuff are still good in it so let's get going <laughs> Okay, so here's everything we have right now. Here's the original cooler, here's the new cooler, here's the card. We're going to be putting this cooler on this card. Uh, but first off, let's take a look in the packaging of this cooler. Here is the packaging. And as we can see, this is solid copper. Um, it's going to cool a lot better than that flimsy aluminum heat sink that this thing had. And uh, I think it will work better. Um, than the factory one. It's got a bigger, uh, probably more reliable fan on it, and I have a feeling it's probably quieter. Plus the fan actually runs off a of Molex, it looks like, so I'll be able to plug it straight into the um, system and not have to worry about the card's uh, voltage and stuff with this uh, fan that uh, may be pulling more power uh, than that's designed for so that's good so let's open up the box okay here we go set that to the side this also has VRM um, or um, memory chip uh, heat sinks here that's cool um, I may actually have to look up how to do this. Um, they are in there pretty good. Uh, it's, it's weird how this is made. Uh, this might take a while to figure out. Um, I don't think there's any instructions. So, And this is the adapter. Really neat. Um, plugs into that. And uh, it's also a pass-through, so I won't lose any connection there. Though it doesn't really matter, I've got a spare Molex in there. Um, here's the adhesive pads for the heat sinks. So, I believe these are for the top of the card, and these are for the bottom of the card's chips. Um, let's see. Pull the card over here. Yeah, that's what I'd assume those are for. And then the top of the card would have these right here. And it should line up like that. And it's going to look like that. So we will uh, be taking this. This is a very heavy, thick copper. Um, it's got a lot of heft to it. We'll be putting that on there, put the heat sinks on, and um, we'll be all set. So let's get going. Okay, so we'll start off by showing you this does have a date code of July 15, 2005 on it. And from what I can tell, it's never been opened. So um, it's really neat. I found this online. So first off, we'll uh, do the heat sinks, the uh, memory chip heat sinks, and get those out the way. If I can figure out how this adhesive works. Uh... It 
it's a little crooked, but oh well. Alright, we'll start with the back of the card. Okay, we got the back of the card. Now we'll do the top. Okay, so now we will move on to the cooler right here. Really nice cooler compared to the original here which had a smaller fan and um, it's not quite as shiny as the new one. Um, you know, we can see that this whole design has some more interesting, it, it's a cooler looking design really. And um, it's a little taller and a little more um, thicker so it should work pretty good. So. I'll peel the backing off of here. And here we go. Really nice shiny surface, nice and clean. I will put some thermal paste on. This came with thermal paste, but uh, I don't think I'm going to trust it. So let me see if I can find this Arctic Silver. See if I can find something to spread it with. There we go. Now I like doing the spread method, especially on GPUs. So yeah, this is how I like to do it. Don't say anything about it. <laughs> Pretty uniform there, so I will quickly wipe this spreader down and then we'll uh, put the heat sink on. Let's see, which way does this go? There we go, we have the heat sink on, and it's got a nice solid contact to it. That's what the aftermarket looks like. All right, so now it's time to put it into the Quicksilver, and let's see what happens. Okay, so I've disconnected the Quicksilver, so we can now open it. And here's the insides. We're going to be using this P5 connector here, this Molex connector, to install the adapter here. So I'm going to set the camera down and do that. In a second. There we go. Get my adapter off of there. Okay. Set that down. Okay, got the adapter plugged in. Now let's remove this card that's already in it. Oop. Don't want to knock the camera over here. Okay. Here is the 9000 Pro from an MDD. We'll take that out. That um, tab there snapped off the first time I ever opened this thing, so trust me, that's never been there 
basically since I've owned it. So it makes it easier to pull cards out. Anyway, here's the 9000 Pro. And we'll set it in front of the uh, 4600 Ti, or Ti 4600. Big difference. So we will set this card in here. Want to line this up in here. And then line it up with the bracket there. And remember, this bracket's been fixed so it's a little bent and warped, but it should line up and just push in. There we go. So I'm going to do this off camera just to make sure everything's done right, put the screw in and hook everything up and we'll be set. Okay, so I have not turned this on yet um, or have really hooked anything up but the main power. I just want to make sure that this actually does power up first. Let's uh, get this a little more out of the way here. Okay, so we'll have the wire like this and uh, we'll just power it on, see if the fan spins up. If it does, we'll say it's a success. I'll close up the case and we'll take it from there. So let me sit down here, set the camera here, focus it, and power. It looks like it's gonna work. It's kind of a loud fan. I have a feeling it's a lot more quiet than the original. Shut that off. Fan spins down. We're good. So I'll hook up the monitor and we'll continue on. Alright, so let's do the official power up and see if the card's still working. Honestly, I can't tell that it's much quieter, I mean louder with the uh, fan, uh, the case shut, so I'd say that's kind of a win. So, the card looks like it's working. We'll let it boot up and uh, take it from there. Okay, it looks like we may have everything booted up. Um, verify my Wi-Fi is connected. For some reason, my airport cards doesn't show up on the uh, menu properly. So, I want to make sure. Yeah, I'm connected. So, we've got that. Go over to About This Mac. And more info. And we'll go down to graphics and displays. Here we go. We've got the TI-4600, which is a good thing. Everything seems to be working on it. Let's uh, do the uh, open mark bench test. See if um, it scores higher than the 9000 Pro. Spoiler alert, it definitely will. So open up open mark. And we'll start this sucker up. Okay, and we've got the score of 4,428, uh, and we'll compare it over with the 9,000 Pro's result. The 9,000 Pro got a score of 1331, so that's a huge, massive increase. This is, uh, like I said, uh, the most powerful OS 9 card they ever made. 
Um, I, I mean, you could have probably flashed a 4800, but um, that's flashed. This is a factory card here. And um, I don't know if the 4800 was actually more powerful. So, just to uh, show you that it will boot into OS 9, I hope. Um, I haven't booted this one in a while. We will restart the system and boot it into OS 9. Now it may take a second, there it is, there's the OS 9 drive. I have Tiger and Leopard both on a RAID 0 software RAID uh, on the same drive. That's why there's four Tiger, um, four of them, two Tigers and two Leopards. It's weird how it shows up in the boot menu. And if you choose on any of them, it will boot it into whatever uh, operating system. I also apparently have a Linux install on here that I... Uh, I don't know if it works. I don't remember installing it on here, uh, but I've been doing a lot of things with this Quicksilver in the last like year, and um, so it, it's changed a lot. I'll be doing um, update videos on these systems very soon. But anyway, let's boot it into OS 9.2.2. And this has always had a memory test error. I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but it, it seems to work fine, so. Hey guys, I'm pausing the uh, boot up of OS 9 that I've already filmed uh, to um, tell you that I finally figured out why that memory test error always popped up. And that is because this system, in the year and a half or so that I've owned it, has never had L3 cache in it. This is supposed to have two megabytes, I think, per core uh, of uh, L3 cache like my MDD. Um, so this Quicksilver is broken, and I didn't realize it until just while I was filming this. Um, that would explain why this system's always been slow, and always seemed to be slower than my Dual 550, uh, even though it had um, at the time, this was a dual 500, of course, but even though this had twice the power, um, it didn't have uh, the L3 cache to back it up, so it's been running on uh, 256 kilobits of uh, L2 cache. So that's a huge difference. So I will um, try to see if Colin can get this rebuilt. Um, as I told you guys when this uh, system, I did the system video on this last season, I um, told you that this had problems booting up at first, and that was because all the thermal paste had uh, dried out and uh, it was overheating constantly. Well, it probably melted the card's L3 cache, and I don't know if it's rebuildable or not. If not, I'll have to um, get a new card. And these things are nearly impossible to find, so hopefully I will be able to get it sorted out. So anyway, let's continue booting into OS 9. Here we go. I still apparently have the ATI drivers on here. I'll have to take those off. Those were for the... Um, uh, Rat on 7000 PCI card I had. Uh, that's just for the Bluetooth. Close out this. Close out that. Close out that. Close out that. Okay. Go over down to the displays. It is reading everything properly. Okay. I'll go over to System Profiler. Uh, devices. and display card here we go nvidia geforce ti it seems to be working great so um that's a that's a plus so i think we're good there so basically i will be continuing to test this card and um i'll be showing you some um in the update video on this system probably i'll be showing you a little gaming uh but uh for now you know that's in this episode um, guys, once again, don't forget about the uh, Power Mac G5 giveaway, blah, blah, blah. Click that link up there. 
I'm just going to wrap this up as quickly as possible. I will be um, not saying that ever again after this season ends, even if the giveaway is not over. So uh, keep th that in mind. Um, this is one of your last chances to enter that giveaway. So anyway, that is the end of today's video. And oh, before I do finish wrapping this up, uh, I, be I believe this was uh, uh, the best deal on earth because uh, this card cost me a grand total of $73. So, yay. Anyway, so yeah. Thank you again, guys, for watching, and this has been a Retke Mods video.